Okay, 9.6, number 41. You cannot, in, in, in general, the rule is you cannot leave a radical in the denominator. And if it doesn't nicely and friend, in a friendly way simplify out, then you actually have to force it out. So I cannot take the cube root of three. It's not a perfect cube. Because what makes a perfect cube is that you have triplets of something. So for instance, this one would need three threes and it only has one. So it needs two more because three times three times three is 27. And I can take the cube root of that. So what makes something a perfect cube is that it has triplets or three of something. Three, 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 four, 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 five, 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 six, six, six. That's what makes perfect cubes in terms of numbers. All right, and then whatever you give to the bottom, you have to give to the top. So what you did, is when you multiply three times three times three, it's 27, and I can simplify that. That's perfect cube. So I can pull that out as a three, okay? Now, I still had two threes left underneath, which condensed to a nine, and that's fine. That's stuck under there. That's not a perfect cube. That's a perfect square. So I was able to simplify out the denominator, and just once you do that, just, um, you know, you just take a minute to check that nothing reduces. Like four over three doesn't reduce, so I can't do anything there, that's done. All right, let's try that again, number 53. So what the problem is, is final answers cannot have fractions under the radical, and they cannot have radicals in the denominator. So sort of the first step that your brain does is this step. Okay, you put the fraction in two parts. Now again, you cannot have a radical in the denominator and you can also not have a fraction under the radical. So this form is not considered complete and this form is not considered complete. So I have to make this n a perfect cube. So again, to make anything a perfect cube, you need three of something. Um, in terms of exponents, I would just sort of think of, uh, this has to be divisible by three. So I only have two n so far. So I need to have a third n so that I have a total of three. Now notice when I multiply up down by the same thing that I have to keep the cube root in the window. Don't lose this. All right, so see what I did here? I made this so this is a perfect cube so that this can come out as an n. And nothing simplifies in the numerator, so I'm stuck with this. But the whole idea is you, is you have to get the fraction out from under the radical, and you can't leave any radicals in the denominator. Let me say that a little better. No fractions under the radical as a final answer. No radicals in the denominator as a final answer. So you have to make them perfect, uh, perfect squares, perfect cubes, perfect force in the denominator so that they simplify out. All right, I believe there's one more here. Let me just see. Yes, okay. Now, you, again, you can't have a radical in the denominator, so uh, this is not a perfect fifth, so I have to force it to be a perfect fifth. What makes a perfect fifth is that you have five identical items, and I only have three right now. I have three A's, which means that I need to make it five. I need to give it two more. And again, don't forget when you balance up and down, you're, you're multiplying up and down by fifth roots. All right, so now I've made it that two, uh, three plus two is five. So now this is a perfect fifth because five divided by five is one. So this can simplify out as an A. And again, it's so important because I'll see students forget to put the little five here and then they'll think this is a square root and they'll simplify this, which is wrong, okay? So uh, the, the numerator doesn't simplify, the denominator does. Okay, gang, that's it for my nine, six questions. Catch you. Bye.